Hello, good day and welcome to the next video in the Invented Tips and Tricks series. What we're going to be looking at today is multi-bodied solids. Now, what in the name of Jesus, Mary and Joseph are multi-bodied solids? Well, a multi-bodied solid is a different approach to assembly design. Yes, it is. You don't have to do this. You don't have to use multi-bodied solids, solids, solids in any kind of workflow. They're completely optional, but they do have a use. And once you see how they work, you might go, mm, mm, actually, I could use that actually for one or two. Mm, that could be. So you don't, they, they are optional. So what I'm going to do is show you how to do it in the most basic form, because I don't like long tutorials. I don't want to cover every single tick box and option because you just get bored. So I'm going to cover the very basics of it. And then that hopefully will give you a guide to then take it forward yourself and then you'll be able to work other stuff out yourself. So I'm going to cover the very basics of it. I know that. So. You know, you're free to put in the comments, oh, you, did, you could do this, yeah, I know, you can't, I know, but you know, we're keeping it simple, as possible. So, what I've got here is a stand. It's some form of metal stand, but this is a part file. This, I am in a IPT, this is a part file. What we're looking at here, this metal stand, is a single manufacturable stand. It's, it's a part in its own right. This would be one object. I'm going to now design a gasket which sits on the end here. So this plate here is going to have a little rubber gasket, which in theory, if you were doing this properly, it should be a part in its own right. So we should create an assembly, place this into an assembly, and then model a separate gasket, and then drop it in, and then constrain it together face to face, all that sort of stuff. But I'm not going to do that. This I'm going to show you how you would do it in a different way, and the benefits that come along with that. So, rather than create a separate part, I'm going to design the gasket in this part, Mm, quite, mm, quite right. We're going to go start new sketch and then I'm going to start the sketch for the first face of the gasket on here and then just project the geometry through. I can't be bothered to sketch all the lines out again so we're just going to reuse those lines and then extrude that sketch by 5mm? Five 5mm? Five right, what next? Well if I was to just click OK now what it would do is just extend the face by 5mm and I'm still left with one part. It doesn't really do anything whatsoever. It doesn't create another part. What we have to do to enable multi-bodied solids and to get going with this new workflow is you click this button here, new solid. If you're wondering, ah, when did they put that in? It's been in for around about, I would say, four years. It's been invented. I think it was 2010 multi-body solids came in-ish. The version 2010, so that's like year 2009. And it's easy to miss. Or you might have looked at it and thought, oh, new solid. No, I'm just, I'll just crack on. So if you click this new solid, what it's going to do is extrude that sketch by 5 mil, but create a new solid. And you might be thinking now, right, okay. So, what, what's happened? What? Nothing different has gone on here. If I scroll down the browser, you can see there's extrusion 53. I'm up to now, Christ, that's, uh, that's a lot of extrusions, but extrusion 53. Doesn't look like anything different. Well, the eagle-eyed amongst you might notice that there's a very faint seam between the two faces here. Very faint seam. And you wouldn't have got that if you didn't click New Solid. It would have just sort of extended this face sort of forward. But no, it's created another solid. Okay, what next? Well, the, the, the multi-bodied solid environment exists in your part browser. On the left hand side you've got this solid bodies folder. Now every part you've ever made in Inventor since 2010-ish has this solid bodies folder, but every part will just have one body in it. It will just say solid one. We've now got solid four. I've made a couple before this, just, you know, preparing for the video. So I'm now up to solid four. But you'd have solid one and you'd then have solid two. So if I didn't click new solid, I'd still just have solid one. And solid one is essentially the whole stand. Solid four is the gasket because I clicked make a new solid. So if you expand these solid nodes, it'll then show you which features in this part make up that, that solid. So extrusion 53 is solid 4 and then literally everything else is solid 1. So that's how that's the makeup of the multi-bodied solids. That's what multi-bodied solids is. It's a, it's a kind of complex term to describe something which is actually quite simple really when you think about it. So what next? Well, what I would recommend you do at this point if you are planning on doing an assembly design like this 
is rename the solids to something recognizable. So solid one, for example, you, you could end up with 10 solids and you'd be like, well, which one's solid eight? I can't remember. So give them a meaningful name. So solid one, I can rename and call it the, I don't know, instead of just calling it the stand, I'll call it the mount. And then solid four could be uh, the gasket, for example. Okay, so we've now got mount and we've now got gasket. What next? Right, well, there's a couple of extra things you can do with multi-body solids. I don't want to cover everything, but I can cover some of the things that you might find useful. One of the things that we can't do because it's not an assembly is we can't change constraint values. So if we did want, like, for example, a one mil gap in between the gasket and the mount, you could have started your sketch one mil off, perhaps, before you did the multi-body solid, but how do you then control? What if you wanted to change it to two, if you wanted to move it back flush? Right, well, we can control the movement of these bodies. Inventor recognises these two solids as their own independent bodies, which we can move around the environment to suit. So, how do we do that? Well, on your panel bar, in the 3D model, click Modify, and then you've got Move Bodies. So, Move Bodies has always been there, but it's never been unlocked until... Well, it's been there, but you can't use it until you've got multiple bodies, because you need to move a body. So, click Move Bodies, select your gasket, you can pick it in there as well, and then you've got a whole host of really badly designed functions to use here. They, they really are really unfriendly to work with. For example, there's no text here, the drop-down's got no text next to it, Move Along Ray... Who's Ray? Where? Why do I need him to move along? You know, it's very poorly uh, described, but it serves a purpose. So the first one is free drag, and that lets you just pick up the body and then just move it around the screen based on where your cursor is, or by a set X Y Z offset. So if you did just want to move it along, I'm pointing at the screen like you can see my finger, but you can't. If you if you wanted to move it along, sort of in this way, sort of normal to the face, that would be the Z axis. So you could get your X Y and Z triad here. We want to move it maybe. 2 mil that way, so you'd say, right, well, we're going to move it 0 in the x direction, we want it to move 0 in the y direction, but we might want it to move it 2 mil in the z. Now, 2 mil positive in the z is going that way. We want it to move negative 2, and then click OK. And that will move that body negatively in the z axis by 2 millimeters, and then that's where it is. That's move the body accordingly. A couple of other options that we've got in move bodies is... Um, our mate Ray. So we can drop down this and we can say, Oi Ray, move along by a certain offset. But what is that offset? Well, move along Ray basically means pick, an, pick a direction to move the body in accordance to. So you can pick, for example, a, a line here, so an edge, and it'll move it in that direction, wherever the edge is pointing, in that sort of vertices, if you know what I mean, in that sort of angle orientation. Or you can pick an axis, so we can say move along the z-axis by a set amount, and you can hold it and drag it and sort of pull it approximately if you want to, um, or by a set distance, like so. So we can do that as well, but I'm just going to leave it the way it is. Right, another couple of things that you need to be aware of as well is further features that you create. If you are working with multi-bodied solids, you need to be conscious of how further features interact with the solids. So if we wanted to create a cut, for example, if I was to sketch, uh, I'm not going to do one, I don't want to get too complicated, but if I was to sketch on this face and then create a cut through all, you need to tell Inventor, do you want to cut through all solids? Do you want it to cut through this solid and that one? Or do you just want the cut to apply to this solid or just to this solid? So you need to be aware of that as well. And there are tools within those uh, commands which will let you control that. The same goes for fillets, for example. When, you pl when you're placing a fillet on a solid, so let's just create a fillet on these two edges, two mils a bit big. This fillet will apply itself to this solid, not this one. So if we go to solid bodies and gasket, you'll see that fillet is now associated itself to that solid body, not this one here. So, yeah, you can... You don't have to consciously do anything with that as such, but you just need to be aware that that happens. Right, what next? Well, that's, in, in essence, that's multi-bodied solid design. You can create very complex assemblies sort of aesthetically pleasing and complex assemblies much easier in the part design environment than you can do creating the parts separately. But, but you haven't got an assembly, this is still a part It is, yes, you're right, this is still a part file. It's got multiple bodies, we can't really create a parts list as such from this yet. How do we get this into an assembly? Right, I'm going to give it a save. The next thing I need to do is to, essentially, the, the most 
basic way of describing this is we're going to explode the part file out into an assembly based on the solid bodies that it has. So we go to the Manage tab, we click Make Components underneath the layout, and then this is going to make an assembly from our multi-bodied part. So we then pick the solid bodies that we want to blow out, so we're going to explode these bodies out into an assembly called whatever we want to call it, so I'm going to call it Stand. It gives the assembly, whichever assembly is going to create it calls it the, the sort of the, the master part name. And it's going to create an assembly called Stand. That assembly is going to have two subparts in it called Mountain Gasket. It's going to be saved on my desktop, and the bomb structure of the assembly is going to be normal. I'm going to click Next. And then it's just another dialog box here just to configure some bits and pieces that you might want to in the destination assembly. So for example the gasket you might want that to be a reference part or a purchase part for example. But I'm just going to keep those as normal. You can also scale it up and down if, you've, if you do need to blow it up or shrink it. You can put a scale factor in there. You can also mirror it based on a, you know, the, the origin planes. So there's a couple of things you can do in here. But I'm just going to accept the defaults and click OK. And then what we have now is doesn't look any different and it shouldn't do but we've now got an assembly with two parts in we can now right click on that part and open it up and that is now its own ipt as if as in we designed it is almost as if we designed it separately it's just exploded that body into its own part file magic right i'm going to save this stand uh the update button's flashing up so best click it and keep inventor happy it likes to cry uh, there we are. Right, what next? What else can we do? Right, well, what it's worth noting, right, at this point is the parts it's created through the explosion don't have their own features. It's not really intelligent enough to go, right, you've exploded that body for the gasket out into its own part file from a body. I'm going to then convert all the holes to holes and the fillets to fillets and, you know, all that sort of stuff. It's not going to really do that. What it's done is created a derived body. So if I open the gasket up again, you can see it is just a body. But that body, because it's derived, is controlled by the source part you exploded them from. Quite. So, we've essentially got a part file controlling an assembly. So, if we come back to the original part file and go into move bodies again, and let's just take this gasket, move it along uh, our mate Ray, the Z axis, and let's just pull it across here. Just so there's something very visibly different about this. Let's save the part file, come back to the assembly, click update, and you'll see it now updates the assembly to suit the changes you made in the part file. So that applies to everything. Further design features, further changes in fillet sizes, anything you do to that original part file will then filter its way through into the assembly. You've now got an assembly which you can then place in a drawing and create parts of this from. You can also we can also source a bill of materials from this. So if you've got the bill of materials tab and then enable the bomb view, we've now got part one, part two, item one, item two. That can then be put into vault, given items, exported into an ERP system, and you've now got a full itemized bomb of an assembly controlled from a part file. And if you are still thinking, I don't understand why I'd want to do this. Well, you don't need to. The only real benefit to doing this is if you are designing assemblies which are really tricky to do by creating separate parts in their own environment and then bringing them all together. So think of consumer products like um, like a hairdryer, for example, trying to create parts, different manufacturable bits which flow between other parts. They're sort of all the same molded body, but they're separate parts. That's really difficult to do in an assembly environment by creating separate parts. It would be easy to do if you could just do it all in one part using the same surface tools and then just explode those out into their own uh, assembly parts so that would be much easier to do that would be much easier to do what you can also do as well depending on how it's been modeled is you can take existing features say if this was an extrusion in its own right and you can then edit that extrusion the source extrusion and convert it into its own body you can split things so let's just see if I, I haven't practiced this I'm just actually just making this up as a go but let's um, let's put a work what I'm what I'm trying to do here and this is I'm, I'm just sort of freestyling this at the moment but I've got this base stand at the bottom I want this stand at the bottom to be its own body so I'm gonna put a work plane on here this could um, this could fail disastrously but uh, let's just uh, <laughs> just bear with me for now. Right, I've failed already because that work plane is completely in the wrong place. Let's put it back down. I just wanted to sit on top of here. 
and zero degrees. That's it. Right. So what I'm going to do is use a tool called split, and then I'm going to split solids. So we're going to use that as the split tool, and then the solid is going to be this thing here. And I'm going to apply. And then what that should give me is solid six, which is that base plate there. It's worked. So using a work plane, you can then split an existing body into two bodies. So we've now got the upper body there, and then we've got this body down here. Now that's a really bad example because I've now, I'm now left with this sort of float thing here, and that's sort of floating in midair, and this fillet just wouldn't work. Um, but you get the picture. You get the picture. That's the split tool put down a work plane, use that to split a body in half. And you can do that using any work feature, any sort of extruded spline as a surface. You can use that to split bodies. The world's your oyster once you get the hang of this. Once you, you understand how the split tools work, once you understand how exploding parts work, uh, you can combine multiple bodies together. So you can then say, right, I'll tell you what, I just want to convert these two together. And that brings them back into one solid. So you can do all sorts with it. It's wonderful. It's a really good way of working. And um, you can save time in the long term instead of messing around with constraints and all that sort of stuff that you would have normally done with assembly. So that's multi body solids. Exploding them out into assemblies and creating, uh, you know, you build some materials, then it's up to you where you go from there. So, thank you very much, guys. Multi body solids, solids, solids in a nutshell. If that was useful, please press like on the video, uh, subscribe if you haven't already, and uh, until next time, thank you very much and doodle pip.